this election, every voter in Indiana will have the chance to select who represents the Hoosier state in the U.S. Senate. And senators will be tackling some big issues in the upcoming years. Inflation, abortion, immigration, the environment are just a few. Whoever's elected will serve for six years. That's through the next president's term. That's why 13 News wants you to get to know the candidates and why we want to help. I'm 13 News reporter Emily Longnecker. Thank you for spending the time with us. One of Indiana's two Senate seats is up for election this year, and you'll see three candidates on your ballot. Republican Todd Young, Democrat Tom McDermott, and Libertarian candidate James Seniak. Each candidate joined 13 News for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We talked a bit about their personal backgrounds and about their priorities should they win. We'll start with Tom McDermott. He's the longest serving mayor of Hammond, Indiana. That's in the northwest part of the state. And he'll tell you he's a straight talker who doesn't sugarcoat his opinion. His campaign slogan is just four words, right under his picture on the McDermott for Senate website. All Hoosier, no You could say that on TV? No, we can't. Not really. But even if we have to bleep part of it, Tom McDermott, Indiana's Democratic candidate for the United States Senate, is just fine with voters knowing he's comfortable saying it because the way McDermott sees it, it's the truth. No bull is what you get with me. It's the reason McDermott believes he's the longest serving mayor of Hammond, 19 years. Part of the reason my, my residents keep voting for me is I, I never sugarcoat what's going on. I tell them honestly what's going on. So 13 News sat down to ask him some questions ahead of November 8th. Why are you running for the United States Senate? I'm patriotic. I'm afraid for democracy. I'm afraid for our country. I believe in simpler times when somebody lost an election, they would call up the other side and wish that person well. And, and even though they may not mean it, it's just what you're supposed to do. And I've been in that position before myself, but I've never seen our country as divided as, as it is today. If you are elected, what would be your top priorities when you get to Washington? I think November 8th is gonna be a referendum on Roe versus Wade's overturning. And that's one thing I promise Hoosier women is when I get to Washington, D.C., I'm gonna know why I got there and I'm gonna know what my marching orders are. And I'll always fight to protect the rights of Hoosier women to make their own personal health care decisions. McDermott's campaign ads address the top issues he says he wants to tackle in Washington. McDermott also supports legalizing marijuana for medicinal and recreational use. He even smoked a joint in a campaign ad. We should be making money off of cannabis, uh, jobs, economic development, you know, state of Illinois made more tax revenue off of cannabis last year than they did off alcohol. And we're a business state. We could do better. These past few months, the only road trips McDermott's been taking have been around Indiana campaigning. I've driven 70,000 miles across this state. National pundits have said Indiana's Senate race is not a competitive one. Even so, McDermott doesn't speak about if he goes to Washington, but when. Mayor McDermott and I covered a lot more during our conversation, both about his decisions in Hammond and about his plans if he becomes U.S. Senator. And we want you to be able to hear that, so we're posting extended interviews with each candidate. Go to WTHR.com slash election and WTHR Plus through Election Day. Next, we spoke with libertarian James Seniak. He's a behavioral therapist, and most of his work focuses on children with autism. Seniak told me he hopes to appeal to voters with a middle ground approach, reaching the folks who are tired of the rhetoric of the far right and far left. As a lifelong Indiana resident, he believes he understands what Hoosiers want. Hoosiers love basketball, and I love basketball. James Seniak's friends tell a story about the time he tried to dunk on a guy two feet taller than he was. It's a story that reminds the 34-year-old Goshen native of his current bid for the United States Senate as Indiana's libertarian candidate. There's a lot of uphill battles, but I believe as we continue to uh, move our message, Hoosiers will recognize it, and, and they'll start to resonate and understand what libertarian uh, the Libertarian Party is as a whole, but also who I am as a candidate. Seniak works as a behavioral therapist with kids on the autism spectrum. Why are you running for United States Senate? I really believe that it's time for the rhetoric of the very far left and the very far right um, to actually have a middle option and, and to present that to voters. I really wanted a strong voice at the top of the ticket that could communicate the values of libertarianism, uh, communicate those values of smaller government, but also look at ways to uh, come to the table for solutions for Hoosiers. And I felt I was the right voice this year for that. Seniak does not support a ban on abortion. He also considers himself pro-life. The way we reduce abortions is not by bans. It's uh, looking at ways and why of the why women are um, making these very difficult decisions. 
And I believe that when we subsidize things like adoption, when we look at supporting our foster care, when we make contraceptions available over the counter, those are ways we naturally reduce abortion. Seniak himself says he and his sister fostered two young children for over a year. But it gave me a very hands-on perspective as well as a heart for those uh, kids. So that's a story that I don't get to tell a whole lot, but it's, it's really a passion of mine. So are the children Seniak works with every day. The kids with autism, uh, they don't see the differences that we do. They don't look at your political agenda. For his part, Seniak says his agenda is civil liberties and letting voters know they have more than two choices on Election Day. If we're frustrated with the system and, and how Washington, D.C. is serving us, we have to think of different ways to uh, represent us. And that's voting differently sometimes, and that's looking for all your options on the ballot. Uh, you may or may not want to vote for me, but at least educate yourself about all three candidates for the Senate race and see which one aligns with your values best. I believe when we do that and we stop voting party lines, we'll actually be much, much better represented in Washington, D.C. If you want to hear more from Libertarian James Seniak or any of the U.S. Senate candidates on the ballot, we've posted our extended conversations. Go to WTHR.com slash elections and WTHR plus through Election Day. The final candidate we spoke with is U.S. Republican Senator Todd Young. He's just finishing his first term in this seat and wants voters to send him back for another six years. We talked about the Chips and Science Act, bipartisan legislation he championed this year, and why passing it was not only an important measure for national security, but also benefits Hoosiers by bringing new jobs to Indiana. As he heads into the final stretch of campaigning this election season, Indiana Senator Todd Young differs from most incumbent Republican Senate candidates in a distinct way. Young is one of only a few who do not have the endorsement of former President Donald Trump. Does that bother you? No, I mean, I take pride on standing my own feet, making independent judgments, not relying on others for my political capital. I've, I've uh, made an argument uh, that uh, I am a grounded conservative. Uh, I live here in Indiana. I'm really connected to the needs, concerns, aspirations, challenges uh, that everyday Hoosiers are feeling. Young spent the last 12 years in Washington, the first six in the House, the last six in the Senate. In today's political landscape, there's a lot of hyper-partisanship, um, animosity, really, uh, on, um, in some cases for politicians and even between um, some members of Congress. So why do you want to keep doing this job? Well, because it matters. Uh, it, it matters now more than, I think, any point in my lifetime. We're facing a, a generational challenge, a, a, really a competition between systems, between uh, the United States and our allies and China. With that in mind, Young touts the passage of the Chips and Science Act, a bipartisan measure he helped champion that President Biden signed into law. It increases the amount of semiconductor chips made in the United States. Those are the chips found in many of our electronic devices, not to mention radar systems and missiles. Right now, more than half are made overseas. Critics have said it overspends and questions if it could worsen inflation. This is a national security investment. Uh, just as we invest in, in, in tanks or aircraft or other weapon systems, we also need to invest in the computer chips that help all these things run. So they are essential to a modern economy. Some of those chips will be made right in Indiana. Young describes himself as a conservative who can work with colleagues on both sides of the aisle. He says it's about balance, both in and out of politics. I try and branch outside of politics uh, so that um, so that I put things in perspective. You know, people value their communities, their families, their sports teams, uh, and, and so many other things. And uh, we're, we're, we could become one-dimensional people if all we focus on is, is uh, political life. Young also told me he wants to focus on innovation to address climate change, and he believes that will also create jobs in Indiana. Our extended interviews with all three candidates are posted on WTHR.com slash elections and on WTHR+. There's more than an hour and a half of interviews, so we encourage you to listen and compare the candidates and their positions before you vote. Thank you to each of the candidates for spending time with us, and thank you for watching. And on election night, join us here on 13 News for all the results and analysis of important local, state, and national races. Thanks for watching.